Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 How To video. Today we're going to take a look at the breakdown of animal outputs and production outputs as it compares to the number of days per month setting that you may have set for your own gameplay. But before that, this video is brought to you by Chasey Dog. Thank you for being a farm baron. So in Farm Sim 17 and 19, players of the Seasons mod, just to give you a little background, what we saw was regardless of the number of days per season that you played, you would have normalized production and consumption of your animals over the course of the entire game year. So if you played three day seasons, you had to feed your animals per day the most amount. But over the course of the year, a three day seasons player would feed their cows, their sheep, their chickens, their pigs, whatever, the same amount as someone playing a longer duration. Let's say six day seasons, nine day seasons, 12 day seasons. So over the course of the year, everyone's animal inputs and everyone's animal outputs were normalized to be the same. Just meant you didn't have to feed so much every day because you had more days to feed. So I had surmised a little while ago, and I'm just now being able to get some time to test this. I had surmised a little while ago that possibly this would be the case in Farm Sim 22. That they will have would have normalized the number of days per month such that over the course of the entire month and ultimately the course of the entire game year regardless of how many days per month you have set you get the same output from your animals the same output from your production facilities including greenhouses the honey etc so that's what we're going to look at today and how we're going to look at it is I've got a greenhouse here and we're going to set this to produce tomatoes and we're going to track the number of tomatoes we get from one day month, two day months and four day months. Same goes with the sheep. We're going to buy 25 sheep and track the wool output. We're going to buy 25 Holstein cows and track the milk output. And you bear with me for a moment. We're going to track the dairy here and specifically chocolate production. And we're going to see how much chocolate we produce over a one day month, a two day month and a four day month. And I'm going to surmise that over the course of the entire month, we're going to have the same output, regardless if it is a one day, two days, or four days. So let's get on with the test. Welcome back. It's a month later, and it's now September, 9 a.m. in the morning. So let's take a look at our production. So if we take a look here at our greenhouse, we have 952 liters of tomatoes on top of the 400 liters of tomatoes here. So that is 1,352 liters of tomatoes. And if you look at the recipe, we're going to make 28 tomatoes every 30 minutes, two cycles per hour. So that's going to be 56 tomatoes per hour. So over the course of 24 hours, we should make approximately 1,344 tomatoes. And that's what we've got. Let's go over here and take a look at our sheep. We have 406 liters of wool over a 24 hour period. Let's take a look at our milk production. 
we have 2,506 liters of milk over that 24 hour period. Now, if you just hold on with me while I run to the dairy, which is right up the road here, you'll see we have two 1,000 liters of chocolates and our production facility has 390 liters of production chocolates left. So that's 2,390 liters of chocolates. We look at the recipe, 50 chocolates per 30 minutes. So that's 100 chocolates per hour. 24 hours later, we should have 2,400 chocolates. So that is our one day month output. Exactly what we would expect based on the recipes. And now we know kind of a baseline of how much milk we should have and how much wool sheet we should have. Now I'm gonna boot this save game right back up to where we started. We're gonna set it to two day months and then we're gonna run the same test. So we've got our save booted back up. Let's just show you. We own the dairy. Production's turned off. We own the greenhouse. Production is turned off. We have no animals in our cow and sheep barn. And we're going to change our days per month to two. Okay. Now, here's a caveat. This is a brand new save in August. We need to fast forward 24 hours before our two day month setting will take effect. How do we know this? Well, if we look up in the HUD, we see it's just August. When you change your days per month, the head, the entry up there in the HUD will change from just having the month to having a month and a day. So we know that our change has not taken effect yet. So let me sleep for 24 hours. We'll come back September 1st, 9 a.m., and then we'll start our test. Welcome to a cold and rainy September morning on September 1st. So now we can conduct our test. If we go here to our production, you're gonna see we still have set this to off. We're gonna to activate tomatoes. We're gonna to activate chocolate. Now we're gonna buy our animals, just like we had them before. We're gonna buy 25 Holstein. And we're going to buy 25 sheep. Again, the oldest black Welsh mountain. Just like that. And now we will just confirm. We've activated our chocolate. We've activated our tomatoes. We have 25 and 25. I'm going to fast forward to 9 a.m. on September 16th. And we'll see what our output looks like nice sunny day september 16th morning let's take a look and see where we are as a reminder we had 406 or so liters of wool on a one day month and now we have 203 liters of wool on two day months Let's take a look at our milk. We have 1,253 liters of milk. That's half of 2,506. What we had after 24 hours on one day month. Let's see our tomatoes. These are 100 liter pallets. One, two, three, four. On top of having 269 liters in storage. So that's 669 liters of tomatoes, which is about half of what we had with a one day month. Once again, bear with me as I run over to our chocolate factory. And we now see we have one pallet of chocolates at a thousand liters. And we have 196 liters of chocolates in storage. So that's 1196 liters, which is awful darn close 
to half of the 2,400 liters of chocolates we got off of one day month. So, I think we've pretty much proven the point here. But just to drive it home, we're going to redo this test one more time at four day months. And you know what? Our outputs should be half again what they are on a two day month. So let's go ahead and reboot the whole thing all over again. Just as we did with the two day month setting, we're gonna have to go in here and change our production, or sorry, our days per month from one to four. You still see here we have tomatoes and chocolates. They are deactivated. We have no animals in our animal pen. And I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna change this days per month to four. Now I'm gonna fast forward just like before. September 1st will be when we start our production. And then we'll see what output we have on September 8th. Once again, September 1st, let's go ahead and go to our production. We're gonna activate chocolate and tomatoes. We're gonna go get our 25 sheeps of the Black Welsh Mountain variety. And we're going to get our 25 Holsteins. 18 month old. And once again, we're going to sleep until 9 a.m. the next day, which is going to be September 8th, according to the HUD. Welcome to September 8th. It's a rainy day. And as you can see, we now only have three pallets of tomatoes with 34 tomatoes left over. So therefore, we have a production of 334 tomatoes over one 24-hour period at four-day months which is, interestingly, about half of the 672-ish tomatoes we saw on a two-day month, which is remarkably close to half of the 1,344, 1,350-some liters of tomatoes we saw with one-day month. Our sheep have produced a total of 102 liters of wool. We had 203 liters of wool on a two-day month, and we had 406 liters of wool on a one-day month. Our cows, our lovely 25 Holstein cows, managed to produce 626 liters of milk on a four-day month compared to the same 24-hour period on a two-day month. They produced 1,253 liters of milk and the same 24 hour period on a one day month, they produced 2,506 liters of milk. Anybody want to guess how much chocolates we have managed to produce? That's right, 603. Over a 24 hour period, we had approximately 1,200 on a two day month, and of course, 2,400 on a one day month. Now, given this information, I am going to surmise that while I did not also track animal consumption, I did not track slurry production, manure production, we did not look at eggs, we did not look at every single production element possible in the game, I think we have enough evidence here to validate that production outputs across animals, greenhouses, factories, etc., are based on the month. So everything is normalized to the month duration. So if you run one day months, you're going to have the maximum output 
every 24 hours because that is a full month. If you run two day months, you're gonna get half that output. Run four day months, you're gonna get a quarter of the one day month output all the way to if you run the longest duration of 28 day months, well, you're gonna get 1 28th the output every day that a player playing one day month is gonna get. It also probably means, like again, again, I didn't track it, your animals are gonna consume 1 28th the amount per day on a 28 day month as they would have over a one day month. So that means over the course of a year, everyone's playing experience is normalized. 25 cows on a one day month or 25 cows on a 28 day month, they're gonna produce the exact same amount of milk over a 12 month period. So guys, hope you liked the video. If you did, please go ahead and toss the like button, hit subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what did you think of this particular video. And until next time, happy farming.